The US military and British forces are continuing their very aggressive air campaign over Yemeni territory, utilizing their air power and naval assets to go after munition systems that could potentially go after civilian vessels or actual military vessels in the Red Sea. Now, here's the kicker and here's what's interesting. To the US military and British, this is a stabilizing mission. They wanna make sure the Middle East is stable and there's no cause for concern for an all out war. But according to nearly the rest of the world, this looks like it's destabilizing the region. And so the question begs, are we stabilizing or destabilizing the region with the continuous air campaign happening over Yemeni territory? And as I start to put all of the pieces together, there's really only one way to describe what is happening. This truly is our Vietnam 2.0. So please stick with me in this video because you're going to see almost a mirror reflection of how the Vietnam War started and ended and how Yemen is turning into the exact same thing. So again, stick with me and I'm sure we're all going to learn something together. Now, before we get into all of this, since this channel does not have any sort of sponsors of that matter, make sure you guys are turning on your dang notifications, leave a comment, like the video, interact with the video. I'm tired of you guys not seeing my videos because YouTube has a very annoying algorithm where we need to take back control of this channel. Okay, so my direct observation when looking at Vietnam and Yemen, when you look into how we even got into Vietnam, France cannot maintain the stability of the country. Now, when I look over into Yemen, the country I'm comparing France to is the country of Saudi Arabia. You see, if you're unaware, the Houthis absolutely despise Saudi Arabia. This is because the main reason why the Houthis actually were brought up in 1992, it was to stop the influence of the Saudis over the country of Yemen, mainly due to Western ideologies. Hmm, you know it sounds oddly familiar. When communism was starting to be brought up in the country of Vietnam, they despised Western ideologies that the French were bringing in. And of course, the United States did not want the spread of communism, so the United States said, you know what, France, get out of our way. We're going to stop the communists from taking over Vietnam. Now, the US military is not trying to stop communism in Yemen. They're trying to stop terror. And the reason why I can confidently now say this is because the Biden administration decided to redesignate the Houthis from Iranian-backed militants to now actual a terror organization. So of course this gives a cause and justification for military factions who are allied together, not only the US military, but to continue their campaigns over Yemeni territory on the Houthis. Something else I need to throw in here is that the country of Yemen, they have their own government, yet they are unable to truly maintain proper security of the entire country. And when you reflect this over into the Vietnam conflict, the exact same thing. You did have government factions within Vietnam, South Vietnam, who did not want communism to spread into their country. And so again, in Vietnam, you have a government who can't control their country. France couldn't do the job, so the United States had to come in. In Yemen, the government of Yemen cannot keep control. Saudi Arabia can't keep control. Thus, the US has to come in. And look, I am well aware, for some reason, whenever you look at modern military history, we love to compare everything to the Vietnam War. Like when we evacuated Afghanistan and we saw the pictures of the helicopters taken off, we're like, ah, that's the Vietnam War. Now look, to me, I feel extremely confident in saying this is the closest the US military has ever come to an actual modern day Vietnam War, but there is some hope. If there's one thing the US military has learned throughout all of their military campaigns, especially in the modern era, the 21st century, whenever the United States enters a conflict, they are responsible for the human life in this conflict. And when it comes to Yemen, the life I'm talking about are the civilians of Yemen who are dealing with one of the biggest humanitarian disasters the world has ever seen. And again, my evidence I have for this is the fact that the United States, although they are going to redesignate the Houthis as a terror group, they have to wait 30 days to do it. The reason for this is because the White House and Biden himself said, we need 30 days to figure out what we are going to do with the people of Yemen. One of the most devastating and disgusting stats about this humanitarian disaster within Yemen is that 80% 
80% of the population need some sort of food, water, or shelter. They need some sort of form of humanitarian aid. And so because of this, even the United States is recognizing if we're going to get in bed with the Houthis and have an all out conflict over the sovereign nation of Yemen, we have to deal with the humanitarian side of things. And if I'm being honest with you, although I wish we could help the people of Yemen, it does not look like the United States wants to go all in and get involved with this. Okay, so that is the silver lining and a possible hope that there won't be an all out war, but things are only getting worse and not better. Okay, so now we have to point out the bad in this conflict where things are only getting worse and not better and unfortunately leading to a possible either ground war or the continuation of an air war. The United States did not want an all-out ground war. So what we did first was send in advisors, also known as really the first generation of our Navy SEALs, of special forces, to train commando groups to hopefully, you know, have an effective force going into Cambodia, trying to infiltrate into North Vietnam. And look, even to this day, this is a pretty standard practice on how the US special operations community works. But the United States realized this is not working. So let us start with our air campaign and one of the biggest air campaigns the world has ever seen begun over Vietnam. Now, what you're seeing today is not on that level of an air campaign, but what we are seeing are extremely precise strikes with the combination of a coalition going after Houthi targets left and right. Where on one day we saw 60 targets being taken out and the US military and the British almost described it as like their version of a shock and awe. A rather common military practice for today's militaries who have the ability to go over countries uncontested and go after targets throughout an entire country, thus creating shock and awe. So you can see the direct reflection. We're in Vietnam, we had our air campaign. We're not boots on the ground, but we're in the area. Over in Yemen, we're not boots on the ground, but we're in the area. And as we know, eventually the United States realized that this air campaign is not going to fix anything over Vietnam. Let us send some boots on the ground and see what happens. And you know the end of that. Now, as we know, things could change in Yemen just like that tomorrow. Ultimately, what it comes down to is who is willing to take it the furthest and who is going to need some sort of justification to take it that far? What I mean by that is if the Houthis manage to actually strike a naval ship and actually managed to do some damage, is this cause or justification for an all-out war with the Houthis? Or if the US military strikes an actual Iranian target, because now we know and confirm that the Iranians are on the ground over Yemen, and we also know there are some Hezbollah commanders on the ground over in Yemen. If the United States takes one of them out, is that going to be cause for an all out war with the country of Iran and the United States and just using Yemen as the playground for them? So there's a ton of different factors that come into play where a possible all out war could occur. But without a doubt, the country of Yemen seems to be the epicenter of where all of this is happening. We do know that the United States military, they are facing Iranian factions over in Iraq, but this has been happening for a long time now. And for the US military, to cause an all-out war in Iraq is actually not technically legal. Because right now the US military, they're not even supposed to be conducting combat operations in Iraq. This is the main reason why the Prime Minister of Iraq wants to kick the US military out. Because currently there is a lot of destabilization going on in Iraq where Iranian militiamen have decided let's just keep launching, launching, launching attacks on the United States. But over in Yemen, there's no formal clause or agreements for the United States. Whereas the US military can virtually do whatever they want as long as they go after Houthi targets, even though it's over the sovereign country of Yemen. Now, there is a massive wild card that comes to the Middle East and the country of Yemen and the possible war that may occur. The country of Saudi Arabia could have a lot of influence on this conflict. You see, unlike the French over in Vietnam, you don't hear too much about them um, with that conflict, but over with Yemen and the Houthis, the Saudis have been heavily involved with combat operations already against the Houthis. And so you have to realize the country of Iran is really utilizing Yemen as their version of Vietnam as well, using the Houthis to try and bully the country of Saudi Arabia. 
So the stage is already set. Like Yemen has already been used as an unfortunate proxy war between the Saudis and um, Iran and the United States and the British. It looks like they're getting sucked into it. Look, the West is already in bed and tied to Saudi Arabia. So it would be in the best interest for the West to at least support the Saudis in trying to defeat the Houthis. It's just that there's never really been a formal reason for the West to ever officially get involved with the Saudis to attack the Houthis because again, you have that silver lining where you have a really bad humanitarian disaster in Yemen. Now, I'll leave a link to this. You can actually go to a Wikipedia where almost every single day has been documented uh, between the Houthis and the Saudis where there has been combat operations. Again, this is almost every single day since 2015. Now, when Obama was in office, he was allowing for the US military to support the Saudis and to give intelligence information or to help with the reconnaissance of where the Houthis were. But during Trump's presidency, things got a little more aggressive because Trump did designate the Houthis as a terror organization. And eventually Biden came in, undesignated them, but then redesignated them to a Houthi organization. But every single time the United States redesignated the Houthis or classified the Houthis on the T list or the bad guy list, things opted to get more aggressive. Now we are in that phase of getting more aggressive, but actual ground type aggressive, going after the munition systems and going after the assets of the Houthis. Now, the last thing I wanna point out is that the US military is clearly very aware of the implications they have of going over an air campaign with the British and US um, over Yemeni territory. In fact, even Central Command says they are only specifically going after itemized things for the Houthis. So radar systems, rail systems, things like that. They are not even going after Houthi personnel directly. And the reason for this, like I had stated in the middle of the video, they do not want to hit any civilians. They do not want to hit any Iranian commanders or generals because they know if they do this, the Middle East will all of a sudden erupt into an all out conflict. So look, the country of Yemen is already a Vietnam for Iran and Saudi Arabia, but Vietnam 2.0 is already already starting to fester up for the United States over Yemen. We are only in the air campaign phase. That doesn't mean that the US is going to fully commit to a ground campaign. But if the Houthis don't stop, I don't know how patient the United States is going to be to wait for an actual civilian vessel to get taken out. Because I don't think the United States wants to live the rest of the next 10 years worrying about a Houthi faction who just keeps launching a missile here and there. And for the United States, it's actually costing a lot of money. But unfortunately, the ultimate cost will always be at risk for Western assets, whether through cargo ships, oil tankers, and not only that, the economic means could also highly be affected for the rest of the world. And does the US military have enough patience to sustain their defense? And I mean, they're calling it a defense even though they are going on the offensive. So we shall see what happens. I really do hope Vietnam War 2.0 does not happen and we have a miracle from God that this will all end. But unfortunately, things again are looking way worse for the US military. And if history does repeat itself and it does look like a Vietnam War, it always goes from air campaign to the eventual, well, we have to go to ground campaign. We got to actually get to our targets. And again, I hope this does not happen.